it's being recorded. So I just started recording again. We weren't recording up until this point. And I will record Annie's presentation. And then once she's done, if there's questions and stuff, that portion won't be recorded. So um, I'm going to start off and introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. Um, I'm Trish Faring. Um, I'm the field representative and rangeland management specialist for the North Dakota Grazing Lands Coalition. Um, prior to starting to work for the coalition, I worked for NRCS as a soil conservationist and a district conservationist for a little over 22 years. Um, so that uh, transition happened the same weekend that COVID hit North Dakota. So I started a job working from home and started homeschooling my kids all at the same time, which was not something I think I want to do again. <laughs> but anyway, um, my husband and I ranch uh, north of beach 12 miles. Um, we have a direct marketing uh, or we direct market our beef um, off the ranch here, uh, raise some registered Angus cattle. Um, we have some pasture broilers that we raise and laying hens and uh, are starting a little vacation rental here on our ranch too. So lots of things going on, but um, I do wanna talk a little bit about the Grazing Lands Coalition before we get started and some of the events that we have coming up. And I'd like, um, just one thing, I forgot to do this right away last week, but if you would in the chat, um, put your name and then also what your favorite meal is this evening. And everybody that's on here will get their name. If you answer that question, you'll get your name in a drawing for a little gift. And I'll put that in the mail to you. Um, I'll post the, um, the winner of that uh, this evening after the meeting. And, um, and then you can, I'll, I'll ship something off to you once I get in contact with you and get your address. So um, the Grazing Lands Coalition was started back in 1996. Um, by a group of ranchers from across the state. So it's a grassroots organization. And we have a group of about 33 mentors that are across the state. Um, these mentors are ranchers um, that have become involved in our organization that are available and willing and uh, able to speak at meetings, at tours, um, to mentor one-on-one. -on -one if there's something that you'd like to try on your own operation, but you'd like somebody else's input, or um, we do a lot of work um, with my position. I work with producers to um, do grazing land planning, obviously. And then also I work with our partners like um, Ducks Unlimited, Fish and Wildlife Service, Pheasants Forever, uh, the North Dakota Natural Resources Trust, basically like a liaison. So I try to help you find maybe a program or a partner or projects that you'd like to do on your ranch. Uh, and I kind of play the middleman there and uh, get things going and, and work with you on that part. So um, let's see what else. I want to talk a little bit about some upcoming events that we have. We have our summer or no, first of all, we have a birding tour that's coming up, um, which is called Birds, Bovine, Biology and Biology on the Prairie. Um, that is going to be in Bowman at Chad and Amanda Nases. Um, at the Cow Chip Ranch, and that is on Saturday, June 18th. I will post this stuff in the uh, chat too, so that's available for you. The summer tour, um, that will be at Denby, North Dakota, um, up between Towner and Minot at the Rob Kramer Ranch on Wednesday, June 29th. I'm kind of excited about that. We're going into a different area. We'll be in the sand hills there and um, Robbie's got both sheep and cattle, so it'll be a fun tour. Um, and then our third tour that we have is our Leopold tour, which is on Tuesday, August 9th, and that will be at Brad Sands Ranch at Ellendale. Um, all of this information you can find on our website, um, which is ndglc.com, and I'll put that in the chat as well. And I will also put my email contact in there. Um, one of the things that Annie and I visited here, <clears throat> we've been visiting probably for, I don't know, six months or eight months about something we could do that was um, more focused on the women that are on the farms and ranches. And so we came up with this as a starting point and we want your feedback and we'd like to hear of other topics that you'd maybe like to have um, sessions on, um, when the best time for you would be to do this. 
And if there's some things related to the farmer ranch that you want to have as well, we'll dive into that if, if you so desire. So we're kind of looking to, I guess, expand this at some point in time. This was just a good starting point for us. There's been a lot of things going on. If you missed last week, it is recorded. Um, I will be sharing a link uh, to that um, on our Facebook page, which is North Dakota Grazing Lands Coalition. Um, and then it'll be on our YouTube channel as well. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you. <laughs> and uh, Annie Carlson is one of our mentors for the Grazing Lands Coalition. Um, she's going to be speaking this evening about menu planning, save your money and your mind. Um, are you tired of the five o'clock panic? Meal planning can remove the anxiety around meal preparation, support a more thoughtful approach to eating and save you money. You can plan a little or a lot. Like I said, Annie is a mentor of the Grazing Lands Coalition. She's a farmer, a pastor, a writer, a homeschool mom of three, and a professional cook. She and her husband live in the middle of North Dakota and are the third generation of her family to steward their land. Annie, I'll turn it over to you. Great. I am so glad you guys are here tonight. I'm suffering from a little bit of a spring cold, so I have cough drop, I have water, I have tissues. I'm ready. So if you have questions, I will <clears throat> see. There we go. We're happily answer questions. At the end, Trish will turn off the recording and then you can ask anything. We're not going to record your questions. So they can be as in-depth as you want them to be. I will answer them as best as I can. So I have a little PowerPoint to kind of guide our conversation tonight. So I'm going to share my screen and let you see that. And I think I want to go that way. Can I do that? There. Does that look good for you, Trish? Yes, you're good. Okay. So John and I uh, farm on my family's land. So my grandparents came here in 1941. Um, they fled California right before the war. Um, grandma was from the Mercer area. And so grandpa brought her and my three-year-old dad back here and found <clears throat> whatever farmland was available. And it happened to be this section that we live on. And the office that I'm sitting in right now was part of the original granary that they lived in for the first four years. And so uh, they literally built it from the ground up. I come from a long line of cooks, my grandma and my great aunt. Uh, who were sisters, were fabulous cooks. Um, old timers, when I was young, would say, boy, those gob girls can sure cook. And so my mom was an excellent cook. Um, I'm a German-Russian heritage, so I like lots of dough and dairy products. When John and I got married, he's a Norwegian Dane. He would say, what is up with all the dough? And I would say, what is up with all the pickled fish? So I, I do more than dough and dairy products, but we, that's my favorite. So I started meal planning, menu planning 10, 10 years ago when these three little people were little. And I had three kids, uh, four and under, and uh, was working outside the home uh, three quarter time as the executive director of an agriculture nonprofit. And I would come home at five o'clock and John was be home with the two bigger kids. I took the little one with me to work and uh, we would come home at five o'clock and John would head outside to do his work. And he would say, what's for supper? And I would walk in the door and I would say, what's for supper? So uh, the five o'clock panic was real. And uh, later on, I'm going to show my uh, emergency meals, I call them. But we were eating a lot of emergency meals. We were eating a lot of spaghetti. We were eating a lot of hot dish. We were eating a lot of frozen pizza because that is what I could whip together before the kids got hangry and uh, John got owly and I got mad. So I started menu planning because I needed something more than those emergency meals every single night. So early versions that I tried, I started with a company called Emails. They'll, they're still in existence. They're much more now than they were 10 years ago when I started with them. But they gave me a meal plan and they also gave me a shopping list. And so oh, that was my first foray into meal planning, like having a plan for a week, which was great. And I really liked it. I got new recipes from them, still some recipes that are in my rotation today. 
Um, but John and I missed our family favorites. Like we kind of missed, you know, his mom's poppy seed chicken and my mom's everything. So, you know, those things we, that we had missed weren't in that meal rotation. Then I found um, a book called Once a Month Cooking. I happen to have uh, the family version, but there's a couple other versions. And the basis of this book by Mimi Wilson and Mary Beth Lagerborg is that you cook once and you cook 30 meals and put them in the freezer. And this was life-changing, especially for a mom who was working outside of the home. Um, John is not a cook. He can grill some things. He can sometimes boil water. I was gone uh, for a meeting this past week. I was gone for an overnight and I came home to a burned on pot because John cooked. So uh, maybe your husbands are more adept in the kitchen than mine, but he, he can thaw something out. He can put it in a crock pot. He can stick a pan in the oven. That's probably the extent of his creativity in the kitchen. So having food in the freezer, meals prepped and ready to go, all the ingredients there really helped simplify it. And I did it once a month. Now, I will warn you that one day that you're cooking was a marathon. Oh my gosh. I was done by the end of the day. But I had 30 meals in the freezer that would last me Well, more than a month because every Friday night in our house is pizza night. It has been that way for 15 years. It's not going to change anytime soon. So I would get pizza night and then I'd get another meal, you know, so I could get almost six weeks out of that one month of cooking. So those are my first two adventures into being very intentional with my meals, um, scheduling them, planning them, um, preparing for meals, not just that panic that happens at the end of a long day. I don't know what we're going to eat, throw something together, or pull something a frozen pizza out of the freezer. Um, I started off with daily to weekly meal plans, planning for one week at a time. Um, I've since morphed into a monthly meal plan and I'll show you how I do that. But I really, I like my monthly meal plan. In fact, I get a little anxious by the end of the month when I don't have the next month's ready to go. Um, I just like having that plan. Uh, as we mentioned last time, if you were with us, um, it's one thing I have decided. We have to make hundreds of decisions in a day. It's called decision fatigue. There's a name for it. If I know what we're eating, that's three decisions I don't have to make. Um, and most of the time, it's three questions I don't have to answer from my family. What are we eating? What's for lunch? What are we? Blah, blah, blah. It's on the fridge. We're done. Now my kids are a lot bigger. And I don't know if this happened to you when your kids got bigger, but they eat more especially that one on the right, he eats a lot. Uh, a standard breakfast for him is three, three egg omelets and with toast, like he'll, he'll eat half a loaf of toast. So now I'm cooking more food and we homeschool. So they're here all the time, eating all the time, vast quantities of food. So I have to be prepared. Um, our nearest grocery store is our local grocery store at seven miles away. I try and support them as much as I possibly can. Um, we grow all our own meat, so I don't buy meat. Um, but any other um, staples, fruit and veg in the wintertime, um, I try and get at the Turtle Lake Main Street Market um, as much as I can. So how do we do this? What, why would I do this? Why, why would I start, you know, and add one more or think to my planning and organizing. So for me, it saves me money. I buy only what I need. I make a shopping list and I buy those things on the shopping list. I'm not going through the grocery store. Well, that looks good. Well, that looks good. I have no idea what I'm going to make with that, but it's on sale. Anybody done that? I did it all the time. And then I had a pantry full of stuff. I had no idea what I was going to do with, but I got it on sale. The second reason, the second reason is waste. Um, I try not to waste any food. Um, it's just a house I grew up in, like we didn't waste food. And I have a plan for what I buy. So if I buy black beans, 
I know what I'm doing with those black beans. And variety. Like I said, when I was, before I started my journey, we were eating my emergency meals all the time. That was our rotation, was a standard list of emergency meals. And there's a great sense of relief. I know what is for supper. Um, today, like I said, I'm under the weather, so I was trying to rest more. I had to make a delivery this afternoon um, that was about an hour and 20 minutes away. And I knew what we were having for supper. I knew that I had all the ingredients and I knew when I was going to make it. I knew the stuff was ready when I got home. I could brown up the hamburger. We had baked ziti tonight. And I actually made two pans. I made one that we ate now and I have one that went to the freezer. So even though I wasn't feeling well, even though I'm feeding bottle lambs every four hours and I had to run and do a delivery this afternoon, I knew it was for supper and I knew I had the ingredients on hand. So a great sense of relief and just stuff off my plate. It ended the what's for supper questions and my family occasionally still asks, what are we eating? What's for supper? But it was mainly my questions and it was like a weight on my mind. What are we going to eat? What am I going to feed these people? And so it's ended those questions for me. Um, it's added a degree of health to our menu. Um, we're not eating those emergency meals anymore. We're not eating those boxes and prepackaged frozen pizzas as much. Having a menu plan, shopping and preparing for that gives us a more mindful approach to eating. I can look at our menu for the week and say, you know, I'm gonna put a salad in there. We're gonna roast some veggies in there. We're gonna have some fresh, fruit with that and you can have a more mindful approach to eating rather than just doing what's quick and easy because generally what's quick and easy is probably not the healthiest for us it adapts to your schedule um, your menu plan can be adjustable and flexible and so on nights that we have uh, busy days we've got you know running to something a day that i'm gone and i'm going to walk in the door that's when i have an easier to prepare meal um, a day that I'm fairly certain that I'll be home and there won't be a lot going on, um, I'll do something that's a little more involved. And so I'll show you how I mix and match those things on my schedule. It saves me time, even though at the outset you might think, wow, she spends a lot of time planning and then the shopping, is she really saving time? And after doing this for 10 years, I am. Um, as with anything, we get better with practice. And so you're going to get quicker. I'm going to show you what I do, give you some timeframes on how that works. Adapt it for you. Again, I'm just sharing the mistakes I've made, stuff I've learned. You do you. Whatever's going to work for you. Try stuff. If it doesn't work, move on and try something else. And it allows you to try new things. So once or twice a month, I will put in a new recipe. So how many of you are on Facebook or Instagram and you see a recipe and they make it in, you know, like fast motion camera, boo, and they have this amazing um, recipe and it looks great. And you're like, oh, I want that recipe. And so you either pin it on Pinterest or you download it or you print it like me, old fashioned, I print it on my printer and then I never make it. Does that happen to anyone? I have a ton of recipes you've never made. It used to happen to me until I had a system for that. And I'll share with that in just a minute. So how do we start? How do I start doing this, Annie? How do I begin? So the first thing that I always say is what does my family like to eat? For example, it does me no good if I make this amazing meal and no one likes it. Because I've done a whole lot of work and spent the money and got organized and prepared and they don't eat it. So make a list of what your family likes to eat. And this is also a way to get family buy-in. Like, what's your favorite meal? Or what vegetables should we have with this? Get your family to make suggestions. Some people I know who menu plan um, have like a menu board up in their kitchen and they just say to the family, like, write down your menu requests and I'll fit them into the plan. Um, I used to have my kids cook with me. One kid would cook dinner once a week and one kid would be responsible for breakfast. And so then they could pick what they wanted for that meal. And so the, 
there are a bunch of different ways to get um, involvement, get your family's buy-in, um, and make sure you're making foods that they like to eat. And then when you look at the meals that your family likes to eat, are there themes that kind of come up? Um, for us, we raise all our own meat. And so that's beef, lamb, pork, chicken, turkey, <coughs> excuse me, some duck, some fish. So I have a lot of proteins to work with. So a lot of times I'll use proteins as my theme and kind of center my meal. Often I've used like Monday is a beef day. So I'm gonna make a beef recipe on Monday, a chicken recipe on Tuesday, um, pork or lamb on Saturday. So you can kind of use some themes there. Maybe it's, I'm gonna have ground beef meal on this day, or I'm gonna have a roast of some sort on this day. So are there themes? Um, Maybe you eat vegetarian once a day, meatless Monday. Maybe you eat maybe you eat vegetarian once a week, and you designate one of those days. Um, um, so Sunday night has been soup Sunday in our house for years. Not as long as pizza Friday nights, but for years. Um, I know a family. The mom had four boys. Mom and dad had four boys, and mom said, "I'm getting a night off in the kitchen, and Sunday night is clean out the fridge night or popcorn." Those are your two choices. I'm not cooking. And so her boys grew up either they could choose leftovers or they could have popcorn. Those were their two choices. So can you make some themes to kind of organize your menu planning? And I'll show you what my current themes are. My themes change. And then take your menu plan side by side with your schedule. And maybe this is digital for you. I'm old school analog. Um, it's all written down. I have a bullet journal and my menu plan laying side by side. And then the meals that I choose, what I'm looking at this particular Thursday, I'm looking at my calendar. Or what have we got on that day? Um, does it need to be a crock pot meal? Does it need to be an instant pot meal? Do I have time to cook something more? Always having an emergency meal in my back pocket. So what does the schedule look like? Because there's nothing more frustrating to have a menu plan and you have a big day planned and you also have a big meal plan. That's not gonna work. So you wanna have kind of highs and lows, easy meals and a little more involved meals, crock pot meals and instant pot meals to kind of float along with that schedule. And then asking yourself, what do I need to use? So I have a lot of meat and I need to cycle through that meat. And so what kind of, you know, what cuts do I need to use? What species do I need to use? Um, do I, do I have too much ground beef or do I have not enough ground beef? And as far as I think the rest of the year should go. So what do I need to use? What do I need to save? Um, Trish knows this, uh, when we get down to the last pack of bacon, oh, we just, we just are sad. So I've taken to hiding a pack of bacon when I bring home pork in the fall, I will take a pack of bacon, I will throw it in the bottom of a freezer. So when I make it to a bottom of a freezer, there's like a prize for me and it's bacon whatever it takes to get through the day, friends. All right, so when I am menu planning, I have a pile of menus and I have some over here. I printed some, there's some here and I just printed some on the on my printer. I'm doing this all the time. So here, here are menus that I just printed, stuff that looks good to me. So I have five that I just printed. A sloppy joe casserole, a breakfast hand pies recipe, bacon cheeseburger, twice baked potatoes. Oh, doesn't that sound awesome? A Mediterranean pasta salad and a Fiesta Ranch chicken pasta salad. So these are five recipes that I'm gonna work into my menu plan, probably in June. Maybe not all five of them, but I'm gonna try and work them in. Um, and if I like them, then they're gonna stay in my rotation. And if I don't like them, then they don't stay in my rotation and all I'm out is a piece of paper. So find recipes and you can look I mean, tons of recipe books. Talk to your friends and family. Gather up grandma's recipes. You know, gather up your recipes. Pull them all into one place. Because there's nothing worse than trying to come up with a menu, menu plan. And you're like, well, I have no idea. What do we really need? Get some inspiration. And so I print out. Most of my stuff is printed out. Even my mom's recipes, I print them out. Um, and then I keep them on old school paper in a binder. Um, 
some people can do it electronically. There's different apps, recipe apps um, that you can do that. And then I use, uh, again, I'm old school. I use the uh, paper protectors, whatever they're called. Page protectors. Yes, page protectors. Uh, because you can lay open your binder on the counter and you can slap on them and then you can just wipe it off. So I like sliding them into a page protector, but they do not go into a page protector until I've made the recipe once and I like it. I made something last month and I was trying to figure out today, what was it? I, I think I've repressed it from my memory, but none of us liked it. And I was like, well, that was a mess. So we're not going to have that again. So that was just a piece of paper. It did not go into the page protector and into my binder. So that's kind of my weeding process. Basically, if a menu makes it into my binder, we like it. Two thumbs up, at least for me. And then I tab my binder. And again, I'm real high tech. Those are sticky notes. And then I organize my binder. Breakfast recipes, appetizers and snacks. This is salads. And then the back here is by protein. So there's pork, chicken, beef, lamb, I wish I could say I had fish recipes, but I don't. Ugh. So I only make fish because my other rest of my family likes it. I don't keep recipes. So I start with a blank page. So this is my May, and I just print this off from my computer, and I start with a blank page and a pencil. Again, real fancy here. You do not have to invest a lot. And these are my current themes. So like I said, Soup Sunday, it's been that way for years. I don't see it changing. I throw the stuff for the soup in the crock pot um, before I go to church. And like Trish said, I'm a pastor. So I work Sunday mornings. I have two services, nine and 1030. I usually don't get home till between one and two o'clock. And then I'm tired. And on my to-do list every Sunday is take a nap, like take a nap. So by taking 10 minutes before I leave for my first worship service, throwing all my stuff into the crock pot for soup, turn it on low, it simmers all day and we know how good soup is when it's simmered for a while. It's ready to eat Sunday night whenever I decide we're ready to eat. The only one I don't do in the crock pot is Nefla because Nefla, need I say more. Then the other one that doesn't change is Friday's pizza night. Sometimes that changes depending on what the schedule looks like for the weekend. So this weekend, John and I are going out with some friends on Saturday night. So I'm switching Friday's pizza night with Saturday's meal because the kids can eat pizza while John and I are out. So I'll switch it like that. That's one of the instances where you can look at your schedule and say, oh, I think I want to switch something here. So that's what I'm doing Friday and Saturday this week. So those two, Sunday and Friday, have been the same on my meal plan for the last at least eight years. Pizza night's been there since we got married. And then the other days change. Um, Wednesday, it says church because we have youth group on Wednesday nights where we have a meal. And so I generally don't have to plan um, for that when I was cooking for that meal. Then I would menu plan that and I would have it month by month. One, so my helpers could know what we were doing and then I could purchase stuff um, in advance. But so Wednesdays is generally church. In the summertime, um, we don't have youth group. We have potluck, and then we switch our Sunday service to Wednesday night, and so it's potluck. So then starting in June, when we make that switch, I will have a salad that I'll bring every Wednesday. So that will go on the menu plan. So Wednesday will be a salad day starting in June. Um, Mondays, probably for the summer, will be something on the grill. And again, you can change that based on the weather. Um, if it's going to be like it is tonight where the wind is gusting 45 miles an hour and it's raining, yeah, I'm not going to grill. We're going to swap something out. And then Tuesday, my kids wanted Taco Tuesday a few years ago. And I was like, that's awesome. We have tacos every week. But then that meant we had to have tacos every week. And I don't know about you, but I needed a little more variety in my life. If you like tacos and you want to have Taco Tuesday every week, rock it out. Go for it. I needed a little more variety in my day. So I just call it Tex-Mex Tuesday. So about half the Tuesdays in the month will be tacos. And you can change those up. Sometimes they can be chicken tacos. Sometimes they could be fish sticks dusted with taco powder. Still counts as a taco. Other times I will have enchilada casserole. Um, if I make those, I'll make two, freeze one. And I can able to pull that out. 
And then Thursdays, uh, it's been Italian for a while, but I found these really great kind of stir fry pad thai recipes that I'm uh, working with. And so twice, probably half the time it's an Italian dish. Like tonight it was baked ziti. Last week it was um, a recipe, Mongolian beef noodle that we really like. There's a ton of veggies in it with homemade sauce. It's, it's really good. And then Saturdays, I've just declared it like the theme for that. It's just like a comfort food. Like, oh, this week it's burnt ends. That's a new recipe I'm trying. Um, I love the burnt ends at, uh, oh, it's a barbecue plate. I'm trying to blink. Famous Dave's. I love the, the burnt ends. So I was like, it's got to be a recipe. So I found a recipe. I'm going to try it this weekend. So we're doing burnt ends and baked potatoes. But we're going to do that tomorrow night because we have date night on Saturday night. So you can play around with your recipe or play around with your, your menu plans. And then here are some different themes that you can have. Stuff I've played around with as um, different themes that you can have. Feel free to take a picture of this. If you want some ideas, like just take your cell phone and take a picture, I, I'm here to help. So if these ideas look good to you, um, go for it. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have a day where you you're have a long day and it's every Monday you're working a longer shift or you know there's more chores that night or whatever, that can be a crock pot meet. And it's, those are gonna be my crock pot meals. And crock pots are, have come a long way. You can have timers that you can set on them so you could leave the house at 6 a.m not getting home till 8 p.m and you can have that crock pot start midday and you're not eating way overcooked food so the crock pots have come a long way i really love the crock pot um snack night or on the first column i have friends who one night a week they do like a veggie fruit charcuterie type board and just chop up stuff and put some crackers on it and that's supper like well that's what we're eating now, if your husband is like mine, if it is not hot and contains like meat and starches, that's not a meal, that is a snack. So it may not work in your house. If it does, I wish I was you. It doesn't work here as a whole meal, but it works for me and the kids. When the kids were little, I did those six cup muffin tins and you can get them at the thrift store. And I would fill each of the cups with a different food, like fruit or a veg fruit, vegetable, some crackers, um, some kind of protein, those sorts of things. And then they called them special lunch. I have no idea how we got that term, but that's to this day what they call them. Um, it was a great way to feed the kids, like a quick lunch. And it let them try new foods because there were five things there. And they, if they didn't like one, that's fine. Or six things, they could eat the other five and it introduced them to new things. Um, you could have a pantry clean out night. You could have a salad night. Um, like I said, for summer, I'm doing a grill night. And I know people who have leftover nights. Like every Saturday is clean out the fridge night. Go for it. So whatever theme, I mean, you may have themes when you look at your recipes, what bubbles up as a theme that you'd like to try, go for it. And I change my themes often, move them around. Like I said, soup and pizza pretty much are parked there um, for the foreseeable future, but the other stuff I change quite often. Okay, so this is the first week of May. So the soup is Zappa Toscana, and then Monday we're gonna grill, and I'm gonna marinate some steak with a shawarma marinade. We're gonna have rice, and then I am trying out a different dressing recipes like I have like four pages of just dressing recipes so I'm picking one uh, every so often to try um, see what we like just something fresh and not from a bottle and then Tuesday was the tacos Wednesday we had youth group Thursday was the Mongolian beef noodle Friday was frozen pizza because I was traveling um, and so normally we eat homemade pizza most of those pizza nights but if I'm traveling or we have date night um, I will not ashamed to throw out frozen pizza and then Saturday was pork roast, sauerkraut, and nephla, um, and that could go in the crock pot. So that's one week. And I started, when I started planning, I would plan one week at a time. And then every Sunday, I would plan for the next week. 
and I wanted to both decrease the time I was planning and also increase my comfort level with how many decisions I would have to make. And so then I went to once a month planning. Um, there's also some different weekly planners. These I just pulled off of Google. So you can Google weekly meal plans and there's tons of templates and ideas out there. Um, this one includes breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. You can plan all of those. Um, I'll show you what I, do. I'll tell you what I do for breakfast and lunch coming up here. But I just put dinner on my schedule because that's the big meal. Um, snacks, they exist in this house. I don't have to plan for them. I don't think my kids would follow the plan even if I had one. Or you can do, you know, something slightly different like this. Again, tons of them on Google for inspiration. So this is my month. Ta-da! Again, soups on Sundays. Fridays, so the 13th, 20th, and 27th is homemade pizza night. So we'll have taco pizza, pepperoni pizza, and then sausage pizza. We went on family vacation down to the Black Hills a couple years ago, and we ate at Boss's Pizza and Chicken. If you've been there in Keystone. And they have like 43 different pizzas on their menu, and it's paper menu. And I said to John, how are we ever going to choose? Look at all these amazing pizzas. And so we ended up ordering like three different pizzas because we just couldn't decide what we wanted. And so I said to John, I'm going to take this menu. And he goes, you're going to take a menu? I said, it's just a paper menu. Like, it's not special, it's not laminated or anything. It's just a paper menu. So I took that paper menu and that inspires my pizza. So I, that's kind of my recipe book for homemade pizza. Get us eating something different instead of just regular pepperoni or sausage pizza. This here is my weekly breakfast menu. And so Monday, eggs and toast. Tuesday is cereal. Wednesday is some sort of an egg bake. Thursday is some sort of egg sandwiches. French toast Friday can also be pancake. Cake Friday. And then Saturday is scrambled eggs. I do not cook breakfast on Sundays because we have that after one of our church services. So I don't need to have breakfast then. Um, I grocery shop on Mondays. And so Tuesdays is a cereal day in my house. I will only buy two bags or boxes of cereal a week. That is it. And when they are gone, they are gone. So Tuesday, the day after I grocery shop, most of the time, there still is some cereal left in the house. So that's why cereal is Tuesdays. John works Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And so um, that's why we have some bigger breakfasts on the three days that he's home. And then where you see the F, that is a freezer meal. And so that is something I will have to pull from the freezer that I've made from before. And then where you see the asterisks, those are where I'm gonna double the recipe for that. And so tonight we were supposed to have lasagna, but our grocery store did not have lasagna noodles. So I did baked ziti. And I made two of those, even though there wasn't a star there, it was just easy to do when you're doing the baked ziti. So that's why there wasn't a star and why we had baked ziti instead of lasagna. But my Swedish meatballs, chicken cordon bleu bake, and chicken enchiladas, I will double those recipes um, so I can stock up for some freezer meals. And oh, I can talk about meals later. So some frequently asked questions. And this is a picture of some baked beans that I did a couple weeks ago. Um, I doubled the batch. And then this went into one of my baking dishes. <coughs> oh, excuse me, from my cupboard. And then this one went into a foil pan and I get these at Sam's Club and they have covers and the covers, you pinch them around the top and then I take a Sharpie and I write on the top what it is, baked beans. And then I, the cooking directions, thaw, bake, get 350 for 45 minutes or whatever. Um, two reasons, one, if John or the kids have to take it out, they know what they're doing or it's really easy to take a meal to a friend or a neighbor. Um, and I just pull it out of the freezer and hand it to them and it's done. So a couple of reasons I like to have some meals in the freezer. So that's that picture right there. So some frequently asked questions. How do I remain flexible? 
And so my answer to that is by looking at the week as a whole, where can I fit in an easier meal? Where can I, do I have a little more time? Or where can I use my crock pot or my Instapot, my air fryer? You know, where can I use these tools to help me get meals on the table? And just because you said you're gonna have something on a Friday, doesn't mean that you have to, but you have everything on hand for that week. So I grocery shop a week at a time, mainly because I don't wanna be running to town every other day just to get three items. So I grocery shop a week at a time. I have everything here. I can make the Tuesday meal on Friday if I want because I still have all the stuff. So that helps me remain flexible. And then how can I help myself when I'm busy? Um, use your tools. So defrost meat in advance. I'll defrost like three days of meat at a time and keep it in my fridge and that way things are ready to go. Um, so I had four pounds of hamburger for the baked ziti that I pulled out of the fridge tonight. And then tomorrow night we're having the burnt ends. So I pulled that meat out um, and that's defrosting right now that'll go in the fridge tonight. So defrost meat. That's the biggest thing that I hear people say. Even those of us who have our own meat, like, oh, but I forgot to defrost stuff. If you have a menu plan and you know, over the course of this week, I am gonna need six pounds of ground beef and I'm gonna need two packages of chicken breasts and I'm gonna need a pork roast. You pull all that stuff out. And Trish said last week, she puts it on a cookie sheet, slides it into the fridge. And so you always wanna have something to catch any drips. Um, because that could be a food safety hazard where your chicken is dripping on your greens. And we don't want that. So put it in some sort of pan. I have like a stainless steel bowl. Um, you just put the meat in and then let it defrost slowly. And then it's ready when you are ready to use it. And then how to use your own meat in freezer meals. So most of the freezer meals that I do, the meat is cooked. Like in these baked beans, I've got hamburger in there. The meat is cooked. And then added to the dish. The ziti was the same tonight. Generally, um, I'm trying to think of freezer meals that I prep where the meat is not cooked. I can't think of any. Um, you can add marinades to frozen meat. So you can unwrap some steaks and stick them in a freezer bag and pour out a marinade and stick those back in the freezer. That's fine. Um, but I'm trying to think of freezer meals that I do where I don't cook it. In the once a month cooking, um, they did something where you did not cook like chicken breasts and stuff. But again, you just used them from frozen and then added the sauces and stuff and put them back in the freezer. I apologize for that right in the microphone. Other questions. So these are some burgers I made a couple weeks ago. We have big burger night. You saw that on the on the menu. It's like the last Wednesday, I think we're having big burgers. So once a month, maybe twice a month, we'll do big burger night. These are some homemade buns. It's my mom's bun recipe. And I thought my mom's bun recipe could not be improved until I put everything bagel seasoning on top. And guess what? They are improved. So if you've never done that, I highly recommend it. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Um, other questions that I've got, and these frequently asked questions, I went to Facebook. If we're Facebook friends, you may have asked one of these questions. Um, I asked my Facebook friends, like, what questions do you have about meal planning? So these are a lot of questions I got from them. Um, how long can food stay good in the fridge? So generally, I like to use leftovers within four days, um, that they've been cooled and stored properly. I like to use them within four days. Other meats, I like to use it. If I've thought it out, I like to use it within four days. So I kind of give myself the four day rule. Um, use that stuff within four days. Um, fruits and veggies, as long as they're good. Um, if you start to see some mold and stuff, either pull those pieces out, cut those off, rinse the rest. Um, but yeah, your food, is, your food is good in the fridge. You have good food storage capabilities. Another question somebody had is, how do I know what to substitute? If I go to the grocery store and they don't have the list on my ingredients, what do I do? Well, that happened to me this week. On Monday, I went to the grocery store and they did not have lasagna noodles. Not a one lasagna noodle in the grocery store. So I stood there and I was like, well, pasta's pasta, right? So I guess we'll have some baked ziti. Oh, that sounds good. We could have had spaghetti, you know, 
So the internet is a wonderful, wonderful tool for substitutions. Uh, sometimes, <coughs> sometimes you can, you just know, you know, like, well, if I don't have ground beef, I could use ground lamb or vice versa. Um, but otherwise just Google it. What do I use if I don't have diced tomatoes? Well, crushed tomatoes will work. So um, just Google those things uh, that everybody has run out of something and, and they've put it on the internet for you to ask the question. So generally somebody else out there has already suffered through that and can help you. Another question I got was how do I get new ideas? Like I'm stuck in a meal rut, we eat the same 10 things. Um, if you eat the same 10 things and you are happy about that, keep eating the same 10 things. You do not have to change if you're happy with the way things are. Please do not let this talk make you throw everything out. Please don't. If it's working for you, keep doing it. Um, how do I get new ideas? Well, yeah, five this week from the interwebs of things I wanna try. And like I said, last month, the recipe I tried, it's not good. We all five of us were like, yeah, don't make that again. Um, talk to your friends and family. If you go to somebody's house and they say, oh my gosh, that was amazing. Can I have the recipe? They'll probably give it to you. People think because I'm a caterer or a professional that I will not share my recipes, false. There is no original recipe ever. I don't have one. I will gladly share any recipe. Um, I'll share a couple of recipe sites at the end when I talk about resources of places that you can trust. Sometimes I will look at recipes and I will look at the ingredients and the quantities. And because I've cooked all my life and I cook a lot, I look at it and I go, no, you're going to have to half that. But no. So as you get more experience with cooking, as you make your recipes more often, you can look at recipes and go, hmm, no, I'm not going to make that. Um, sometimes you'll be pleasantly surprised. So one of the recipes that I, sites that I'll share with you this was, we were still at the old farm, so it was over 10 years ago. They had a recipe for ancho, orange ancho chili spiced nuts. And I looked at it and I read the ingredients and I was like, that is weird enough that it has to be delicious. And so I made it and it was amazing. And I still make them sometimes for Christmas presents. So orange ancho chili spiced nuts. It didn't sound great and the ingredients looked weird, but it was amazing. Seven, how do I cook when the wheels come off the bus? So when the day goes exactly the opposite of how you had planned it, then what do I do? And that's where we have emergency meals. And I think the next slide is emergency meals. So I will show you my emergency meals and then you can make your own list of emergency meals and how we're gonna get through that. But the wheels come off the bus fairly frequently and you have to resort to an emergency meal. And so my, my town friends will often say like, what do you do when you don't have delivery? Like it used to be pizza delivery, but then after COVID, everybody will deliver food dudes at Grubhub and all those places. What do you do when you don't have food delivery? Have you met sausage? Sausage can be done in 10 minutes. So that's one of mine, spoiler alert, that's one of mine. Um, but we have to make our own fast food, right? We have to have our own when the today goes absolutely opposite and we're all hangry at 9.30, what are we gonna eat? And so I'll share those meals with you later. And then when I get all the time, how do I get my kids to eat the food I cook? Um, the rule in my house, um, I do not have a clean plate club. I do not make my kids sit there and eat their food. Um, we generally don't have a lot of snacks in the house. And so they can't get up from the table and go get chips. That's generally not what we have available. And my, my request of them is two out of three. So if there's something on the table that you don't like, for example, Henry does not like squash. I'm not going to force him to eat it. There are things I don't like, fish. I, I, would, I would appreciate if the people who loved me did not force me to eat it. So pick two of the three or three of the four items on the table. Usually one is a salad or a vegetable of some sort, and then some sort of starch. Pick two out of the three. And a meat, protein of some sort. You can choose. And so giving kids options like that um, will help. 
there, there are some things my kids just don't care for. Um, we had a family quiz a couple weeks ago, and one of the questions was Eleanor's least favorite food. And we all like yelled tomatoes because we know she hates tomatoes. Well, I like tomatoes, like in a pasta salad or something, and are on this burger. And I don't make Eleanor eat them. I know she doesn't care for them. And so I allow her to pick them out if she wishes or just choose not to eat that food. Um, I taught with a gal when this was 20 years ago. And she said to me one day, I'm just really tired of making three suppers. What do you mean? She said, well, my son will only eat macaroni and cheese. My daughter will only eat chicken nuggets. And then I make something for Dave and I. And I was like, I, I don't even imagine a world in which that would have been okay with my parents. Like, I can't imagine my dad saying that was okay. So I'm not going to make three meals, but I'm going to make good food and they have the option to eat it or not. Another thing that helps is to get kids helping with meals. Um, my kids can find their way around a kitchen. They can cook simple meals at this point, but they're getting better. And so having them involved gives them some ownership of it. And I can't remember what the food was, but one of my kids had made it. And one of the other kids complained like, oh, we're having that. And the other kid that made it just rounded on them and said, listen, I made it and it was a lot of work. You got to try it. And I thought, well, there, I didn't have to do anything with that. So getting them involved, offering them choices um, is a way to make food not a battleground. Um, I don't want to fight with my kids over food. And so I cook one meal and they're welcome to eat it or not. There was one meal. I can't remember what it was. John and I were trying to figure it out the other night for this talk. And it was a meal Henry did not like. Like it was 0 for 3 on that meal. He did not like any of it. And normally I don't do that. Normally I know what my kids like. And that was probably a rush thing. And I just grabbed and happened to be three things he didn't like. So he like took his plate clean, stood up and walked over to the cupboard and put it away and like sat back down because it was family meal time. And I said, what's going on, buddy? He's like, I just don't care for this, for this meal. I mean, thanks for making it mom, but I'm just not going to eat. And John looked at him and he's like, do you want to make a peanut butter sandwich? Like you can, there's some fruit, like you don't have to starve. So, uh, my kids know, like, if I make, if I'm over for three, um, they got a peanut butter sandwich, they can eat some fruit or some string cheese or something, um, but they don't, they don't have to eat what I make. All right, so what happens when the wheels come off the bus, quite literally? What are some quick meals that are in my back pocket? Spaghetti. Um, I always have spaghetti noodles. Um, Sam's Club will sell you a case of spaghetti noodles. I think there's eight or 10 packages in a case. <coughs> I will generally buy one of those going into the fall in case we get storms or three day blizzards like we just had. So I'll have some of those on hand and I make my own spaghetti sauce. So I always have that on hand. And so spaghetti is a quick meal with or without meat. Um, I can get spaghetti on the table in about 20 minutes. Uh, in our family, we call it hot dish. <coughs> Some people call it goulash. Again, I can get it on the table in about 20 minutes. Usually ground beef, some type of pasta, cream mushroom soup, peas or corn or some sort of vegetable all mixed together. It's amazing. I love it. Um, sausage. There's my spoiler. Sausage and fried potatoes. I will instapot my potatoes. And it's 13 minutes for a couple pounds of potatoes in my Instapot. And then they're soft. And then I could quickly fry them up uh, with the sausage. And I can get that on the table in about 15 or 20 minutes. About 20 minutes for the potatoes. And so, again, another, like, meals I can get on, on the table in about 20 minutes. There's always the frozen pizza. Um, I find that if I keep it on hand, if I am not home, that's the first thing my family goes for. So I try not to keep it on hand. But if I know, like, I'm going to be traveling and it's Friday night, they're getting frozen pizza and I'm not going to worry about it. Um, one thing that makes a quick meal for us is just baked beans and frozen biscuits. And that's about 10 minutes. Just 
baked beans over biscuits, family favorite around here, and the kids love it. Different rice mixes, um, Nor, rice aroni, Uncle Ben's, all make some quick cooking rice mixes. Those are easy to have on hand. If you're going to throw some steaks on the grill, do some burgers, um, whatever, those are quick side dish that you don't really have to do a whole lot of work with. The ubiquitous mac and cheese. Um, I have an Instapot mac and cheese recipe. Again, you can Google that. There's tons of them out there. But the Instapot mac and cheese recipe um, only takes about four minutes pressurized cooking time and is really good. My kids actually prefer it to box macaroni and cheese. Um, as an aside, I was in college before I realized that macaroni and cheese came in a box because my mom always made it from scratch. So the Instapot version of mac and cheese, really quick. Um, and it gets, I can get mac and cheese on the table in 10, 10 minutes. Also serve that with sausage. Rice mix, also serve with sausage. Sausage, the fast food meal. Do I have another one? Oh yeah, burgers. So when we get our pork and beef back in the fall, I will spend a day in my kitchen and I will pat the up burgers. And so you can do it a couple different ways. You can hand patty burgers. I bought a patty press off of Amazon for like 10 bucks. It is amazing. It also makes stuffed burgers. So I will spend a day making burgers and I will separate them between wax paper. And for us, we eat about eight burgers. Um, John and Henry will both have at least two and the girls in Ireland have one and then we have one extra. So I'll put packages of eight burgers into the freezer and then they're ready to pull out and throw on the griddle, um, throw on the grill. Yes, I cook them from frozen and nobody can tell. So uh, that's another kind of quick meal that I have in my back pocket. It's just bags of pre-pattied burgers ready to go on the grill. And so what else can you use? And so look at, look at your list of menus, look at your list of meals that your family likes to eat. What are your quick hits? What are your, I can get this on the table in less than half an hour. And then keep those things on hand. So like I said, I, there's never less than two boxes of spaghetti in this house at any given time. Uh, there are always potatoes in this house. Um, there are always rice mixes. I always have pasta and cheese in the fridge. I always have burgers in the freezer. Like those are just my quick hitters that I know that if it doesn't go according to plan, I can pull out and we do not have to wait an hour to eat. So what do I need to keep on hand? And so one of the things about having a menu plan and working on, you know, being more mindful and conscious of, of your schedule and what you're eating is to keep things on hand. And so I just kind of made a, a sketch of things that, to keep on hand um, to make those easy meals. So in my pantry, I am never without some type of beans, canned and dry, um, rice, both, rice mixes or just plain rice, flour, different kinds of pastas. And I do a lot of canning. And so I always have broth on hand. I always have canned vegetables on hand, sauces like spaghetti sauce and pizza sauce. And I have some canned meals, stew, soups, those sorts of things um, that are canned up and on the shelf. And so whether you buy the cans from the store or you can them yourselves, um, keep those things um, in your rotation, those are things that you can access. And then in the freezer, uh, like I've said, we have a variety of meats. Um, you can freeze a lot of vegetables, keep those on hand. <clears throat> I actually like to eat and use frozen vegetables in my cooking um, because they're picked at the height of freshness and they're flash frozen. And so they're not canned, they're not subjected to that heating process. And to me, they just taste better than, than something out of a can from the store. Um, a lot of frozen fruits that you can keep on hand, add to smoothies, throw in a pie, throw in some sort of dessert, and then freezer meals, keeping those on hand. Again, I use them for our family and I can grab one out and take it to a friend or a neighbor um, if I need to, to share some love with food that way. Those are on hand and ready to go. So I will take those and I'll put them in those foil containers and then I'll slide that container into a two gallon Ziploc bag and that keeps it fresh for up to six months. So I try and cycle through those meals within six months. 
I've gone up to a year and they've been fine, but I just try and keep them fresh for six months. Okay, some resources that I want to make sure I share with you. And again, you can ask me all the questions you want. Questions are coming right up. But here are some resources I wanted to make sure they shared with you. The first one was e-meals. Like I said, it was my training meals. It got me started. It got me thinking about an entire meal, what I would need to make that meal, and making the list, shopping the list, cooking the list. So it was training wheels for me. I recommend it. They have tons of options now. Um, the once a month cooking family favorites. That was another one. Mine is, it's beat up, but I still love it. Um, this is a cookbook I got for my kids. So when they were wondering, well, what can I make? What can I learn? Um, it's a Mark Bittman cookbook. Mark Bittman is a great chef. And it's his book, How to Cook Everything, the Basics. And it has tons of pictures, shows you every step of the way, um, how to do even the simplest things. And so it's a great cooking um, primer. If, if you or your kids want some help with cooking, how to do things, um, what's the difference between a, a whisk and a, and a spatula, this tells you. And so this is a really great one. The kids like using it and it it walks them through step by step what to do one of the recipe sites i like is all recipes um, i do a lot of stuff on there get ideas or print recipes the <clears throat> all recipes will also let you scale a recipe so a lot of recipes are for smaller families which we might be if i didn't have three teenagers almost teenagers in the house so we have to double almost every recipe and all recipes lets you scale that up. And so if you're making something for a potluck or a family reunion, that's a great recipe site where you can scale up. Uh, Taste of Home is a magazine. It is also a recipe site. Um, these are all submitted by home cooks. And so this is not just some kitchen that's churning out recipes. Um, a lot of people ask me if I get recipes off the Food Network. I shy away from the Food Network unless it's a specific chef. Um, the Food Network, a lot of the recipes come from the test kitchen, which is not, um, I've had some misses there. I'll say that. Um, Reed Drummond's recipes are usually pretty good. There's a good a couple that I could tell she hadn't tested quite enough. Um, Ina Garten is another one that I love. My go-to pizza crust recipe is Bobby Flay's. So just go to the Food Network, Bobby Flay's pizza crust, it's the best. Um, but just be aware of the Food Network test kitchen recipes. Those usually aren't, uh, I trust the home cooks that are submitting to Taste of Home. Um, we only share our best stuff, right? So these are good ones. Facebook, there's lots of recipe sharing pages, lots of inspiration on there, cooking videos, how to stuff. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram's the same. Um, good stuff on there, good ideas, like the sloppy joe casserole. I've made sloppy joes for years. I've made casserole for years. Never occurred to me to combine the two. So we're going to try that. I found another one that's in the queue waiting to start probably in June is like the John Wayne casserole. And if you know Henry, you know how much he loves John Wayne. And I was like, well, for the name alone, we have to try this recipe. So sometimes they're fun. Sometimes it just is something you never thought of, but there's lots of inspiration there, Facebook and Instagram. And ask your family and friends. If you had something that was really good, ask them for the recipe or where they got it. Um, <coughs> I will share any and all recipes. And so uh, usually it is copy and paste. And I have a friend that we share recipes back and forth on text. And I'll tell her, like, this is what I made for supper. She's like, oh, I'm going to need the recipe for that. And so copy, paste, send the link. So it's easy to share recipes. And then I wanted to cover meal planning services um, like HelloFresh, Blue Apron, like there's a ton of them. Don't be afraid to use them. If you are struggling shopping and organizing and planning and doing all of that stuff, don't be afraid to use a meal service. And I have friends like me who raise a lot of meat. They they use the vegetarian options with the meal planning and then they add their protein. And so they do a steak or chicken or whatever with the stuff that is, the recipe is there, all the ingredients come, how to cook it, all that comes together. And so 
I have friends that do two meals a week come from HelloFresh and it's saving them. They are able to, you know, don't have to worry about these two nights, the other night is pizza night. And so if that helps you in your menu planning, knowing that you have two meals that are ready and prepped coming to the door, by all means use a recipe or a meal kit service. They help a lot of people. So I wanna make sure that you knew about those two. Now, all your questions. In case you're wondering, this was John's birthday and we were grilling lamb chops and those are all lamb chops. And we probably, we did eat them all. Lamb chops are like another fast food. I like to grill them three minutes on the side because I like to eat them medium at the most. And so about three minutes on the side. So those are all the lamb chops and they were amazing. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I believe Trisha's gonna stop the recording and then you guys can ask any questions. Okay, I hit the wrong button on my computer here, so bear with me for a second. 